Welcome to the Billboard Mastery Podcast, where you will learn the correct way to identify, evaluate, negotiate, perform due diligence on, select the construction type, build, rent the ad space, and operate billboard signs. And now, here is your host, the guy that built from scratch the largest privately owned billboard company in Dallas, Fort Worth, Frank Rolfe. Risk versus reward, and a very, very important play between making money and losing money, and one that every billboard builder and buyer must be aware of. This is Frank Roth, the Billboard Mastery Podcast. We're going to talk about just that one item, risk versus reward. Now, what does that even mean? Why would we even waste time talking about that? Well, whenever you're looking at buying or building a billboard, you can't treat all of them the same. Some are risky and some are not. Let me give you an example. Let's assume you went out, you're outside of town, on the state highway, you found a farmer, he's got a piece of land, you cut a deal. You're going to rent that land from the farmer for 30 years on the initial term of the lease, and you're going to pay him just a percentage of whatever rent you bring in. No minimum required whatsoever, no chance for development. You're going to build that wooden telephone pole sign there. And that thing is going to sit there and going to make you money for 30 straight years. You have almost no risk in that at all. Plus, the sign structure is very, very inexpensive. So all you're gambling is maybe four or $5,000 to build the sign. You know you're going to get your money back over time. You go out there and you rent the space. You put up the ads and you let them just make money every day. Change the ads out once every year. That's not a very risky deal. But now let's change that. Let's say instead of that, you're going to build a steel monopole sign at a cost of $80,000 alongside a train track, and your railroad lease is a 24-hour lease, which means it can cancel on you at any time with 24 hours notice. That's insanely risky. You could put up that sign, and three days later, the railroad could say, oh, yeah, you got to remove the sign. We decided we're going to expand the tracks, and you're out all your money. And that is why risk versus reward is so important in this industry. Because billboards do have some degree of inherent risk. And correspondingly, they come in different shapes and sizes and different price points. So there has to be some consideration given for the risk of the capital that you're spending, whether you're building it from scratch or buying it. Now, one of the dumbest deals I ever did, the world record stupid, was one just like I described. I bought two billboards on a train track property out by the airport in Dallas. And I paid way too much for them. Back at that time, I paid $100,000 apiece, which was the most I'd ever paid for a billboard, buying it. And it had a 24-hour termination provision in the lease. So what do you suppose happened? I thought I was a genius. I bought the signs. I got them rented. They were running for big bucks. They were running for about $5,000 a side. I looked like the smartest guy ever, for a few months anyway, until the railroad sent me a certified letter saying, yeah, we're taking advantage of that ability to cancel your lease and come get them down. Man, was that a hit to my ego. I went from a genius to an idiot in no time flat because I had not properly looked at the amount of risk in that deal. I only looked towards the reward of it, how much money I could make with them occupied, how much money I would make if they just kept sitting there ginning money every day. But I never thought about the risk angle, never thought about the fact that they could terminate me and all that money would go down the drain. So that's why when you're looking at buying or building a sign, you've got to look at both dynamics, the risk and the reward. And there's a guy named Sam Zell. He's not in the billboard business, but he is the largest owner of real estate in American history. Largest owner of apartments, largest owner of office buildings, and largest owner of mobile home parks ever. He's really old now. I think he's almost 90 years old. But he lives by the concept of risk versus reward. And he will tell anyone who will listen that here's how he looks at life. If a deal has low risk and high reward, you always do it. If a deal has high risk and low reward, you never do it. And the only ones you ever have to debate is high risk with high reward. And then you're trying to figure out, is it worth the risk? And what will happen to you? Now, what creates risk with billboards? Well, the ground lease itself, is can it be terminated? Or can the visibility be blocked? So there's all kinds of attributes that might make you lose that sign. All your neighbor would have to do, for example is build a building that obstructs your sign on one side. And now instead of a two-sided sign, you only got one. It's those type of items, terminating your lease for development, blockage. It could even be change in direction of the highway, although it's very rare. But I've seen in Dallas alone, Interstate 30 went from being a two-way highway to a one-way highway. And then they built the other one-way side years later, across, uh, significantly far away from it. 
So those are what are the attributes of risk. Also, such features are how much is your paying for the sign. If you're building a, 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 an old wooden telephone pole sign or a crude metal sign out of angle iron, it will be a whole different picture on risk versus reward than unless you're building a brand new steel monopole. And even then, we all know steel monopoles come in many, many different shapes and sizes. A center mount back-to-back -back is a fraction of the cost of a full flag Super V. So the cost of the sign is another element of risk that we have to look at. Even the way you build the sign, a wooden sign over time is riskier than a metal because the metal seemingly lasts forever. And then you have weather variations, areas with high levels of wind, maybe possibly a tornado, maybe a hurricane zone. Let's assume you had a billboard that you were buying in an area that has hurricanes. We all know hurricanes have been hitting at the rapidity of about once every year in recent times. That would also go into your total function. So the bottom line is you really have to start looking at every deal you do from the parameter of risk versus reward. And you got to put it in the two categories. It's either high risk or low risk. It's either low reward or high reward. If it is high risk, 24-hour lease from the railroad with a huge upfront cost and low reward, you would never want to do that deal. It's not worth the risk. And if it's very low risk, like that wooden sign out in the field, with very high reward for the amount of money you put into it, well, of course, you'd always do that deal. Why would you not do that deal? You have almost no risk and a huge reward from that. The only ones you ever have to really debate in life are the high risk versus the high reward. Now, how are some ways you can get a handle on that? Well, I would suggest you break it into three categories. Best case, worst case, realistic case. And let that kind of guide you in your decision. The best case would be what happens if you get the sign fully occupied at the biggest rent you can imagine and you don't lose that sign ever. The realistic case is what if you get it for less than your dream amount of rents? And then the worst case is everything bad happens. You can't get the sign rented and or the hurricane blows it down or the lease gets canceled, you have to take it off. And then you ask yourself, is there any way to mitigate that worst case? What can I do to mitigate it? Well, you might say, well, let's see. If they terminate my lease and I have to take it down, well, I can take the metal sign and I can move it, but I'll have to leave the part in the ground that's cemented in and I'll have to cost it to the crane to bring it and take it down and put it back up. So that's going to cost me, let's say, $20,000. And if I paid $70,000 to build it, but I can reclaim it all except $20,000 and replacing it, I'll be in the next one for ninety. dollars but I can still save the day. That's the way you have to analyze it. You have to look, okay, how can I mitigate this risk? And once you've done your best case, realistic case, worst case scenario, that'll tell you the story. I would not want to do one where my worst case is financial ruin. So I would never want to build or buy a monopole sign with a short lease where I can't survive what happens if they call my bluff and, and, and terminate it? So don't do anything on the worst case that can, that can wipe you out. And of course, the best case, it takes care of itself. The key question is, are you happy with the realistic case? If you can survive the worst and are happy with the realistic and ecstatic with the best, then you should go forward. The bottom line to it all is that every single billboard deal you ever look at, whether building it or buying it, can be broken into these bite-sized components and that'll help guide you to whether you should do that deal or not. This is Frank Croft, the Billboard Mastery Podcast. Hope you enjoyed this. Talk to you again soon. Thank you for listening to the Billboard Mastery Podcast. Be sure to visit us at www.billboardmastery.com, where you can find past episodes of this show, plus an array of information to help you successfully build, buy, and operate billboard signs.